Hi, and welcome back to another video with It's Dr. Dan, and today we're going to be looking at the world of solubility. So in this video, I'm going to go over the basics of how we can actually see how different materials, when they're added to a liquid, such as water, how exactly are they going to behave? How are they going to be breaking apart when you're looking at these, especially leading up to net ionic reactions, which show how different ions come together and actually dissociate in water. So let's take a look at it and try to see what does solubility have to talk about and really what the world of solutions is all about. So in the very beginning, when we look at any of these things, um, what we are trying to understand is how does a solution necessarily behave? So at the very start, what it kind of looks like is, let's say if you take salt, table salt and you add it to a pot of water, for example, if you're going to make pasta or rice, well, what's exactly going to be happening to it when you add it into that pot? Well, first you're going to see salt sitting right at the bottom of that vessel. And until you stir it up, it doesn't necessarily dissolve. So what is really occurring there? Well, salt is an ionic compound, right? Sodium chloride. So you have the sodium ions with those little chlorine ions like how I have shown here. And the way that that's oriented is in a lattice. Now, how does it dissolve? What is happening? Especially when we compare, if I put hundreds and thousands of water molecules all around it, well, what are we seeing? Well, once you start moving this solution around, you're causing random molecular motion to occur meaning that there's this unpredictable movement of molecules within this solution. So when we are looking at this thing, will it dissolve? And, and you're all like, yeah, absolutely. Sodium chloride does dissolve. What is this guy talking about? And you're right, but what exactly happens? Well, the way that we can look at this is when you mix salt and water, can you see the salt anymore once it mixes? And the thing is, no, you can't, right? When you're going through that, you made a homogeneous solution, meaning that it is fully uniform when you see it. It's no longer, you're no longer able to really be able to see that difference between the two layers. Now, in the solution, we can label a couple different things, right? It's made of water and salt. So this is what we refer to as an aqueous solution. Okay, so this is aqueous, meaning that what is the solvent? Well, the solvent in this case is water, right? So that is the major component of this. The solvent is H2O. So whenever something is a solvent, that is the major shareholder in this particular, um, this particular vial that we have. So we have a solvent and we also have a solute. The solute in this can case is the smaller component or the minor portion. In this case, it's gonna be sodium chloride. Now, when water all of a sudden comes into contact with this per these particular ions, it starts to surround them. And eventually what's gonna be happening? Well, we're gonna create different forces that are gonna be caused here. We're gonna have ion dipole forces forming all around the sodium chloride. And when you add enough water molecules, hundreds or dozens of water molecules around every single ion, it's eventually going to be pulling them apart and actually causing it to be soluble. So how can we show these different reactions? Well, it, what we do is, is we do different solubility equations. So being that I have NaCl uh, in solution, we can show how that's going to be breaking down. So what happened? We had NaCl, and that was originally a solid, and it was added to water. That's breaking down into two ions that we have here, right? We have one Na plus and one Cl minus. So it gets dissociated into each of their individual pieces. So we have Na plus, and then we also have Cl minus as the other part. So it dissociates into its ions. Now, why is that something that's important? Well, when you take multiple solutions 
they dissolve and you mix them together, that's when certain chemical reactions are going to start occurring. This is when we can have different aqueous solutions in this case. So when we have Na+, this is going to be Na+, Aq, and Cl- Aq, telling you that they're both aqueous within solution. And we're going to go through a few examples to show exactly what this represents. Now, are these only in terms of ions? Are they the only things that are going to be dissociating? Well, or what exactly dissolves? Well, what if I look at a different example of solubility? What if you take sugar and you throw that into a glass of water? Does it dissolve? And you're going to be like, well, okay, it's not ionic. Sugar is a C6H12O6. I have the little structure here. If I were to put all those within a vial, well, what is that exactly going to look like? You're going to have all these sugar molecules that are going to be close together, but then all of a sudden, they're going to be wandering and dispersing apart. They're going to randomly move away from each other. So what exactly happens with these solutions? The first thing that we got to remember is an old phrase of ours, which is like dissolves like. So in this case, what does that mean? Well, water is a polar molecule. So what would water dissolve? Well, it's going to dissolve other polar molecules, like dissolves like. So in this case, when we have glucose, glucose over here is this molecule down here. And we can copy and paste that up here for ourselves. And when we actually see that thing, well, it is, it is C6H12O6. But notice how it has a bunch of OH groups all around them. These are all polar groups. So being that they are polar, they're going to dissolve. How can we try to show that? How can we illustrate that these dissolve? Well, for us, it's actually, once again, we're going to write a solubility equation to show this. So if I take C6H12O6, and it's a solid sugar cube that I'm adding to water, is it going to dissociate and ionize? No, not in this case, because it's not made of ionic materials. Instead, when we add that to water, it's going to just be C6H12O6. O6, and we're going to label it as aqueous, meaning that it dissolved. So it, you can't see it. It's still a homogeneous mixture, but it didn't actually break apart and ionize. So, and that's kind of the idea behind a lot of these. So these are the two major types. So this is ionic and covalent. So when you're trying to do these, a lot of them tend to be with ionic molecules. Covalent follows just the like dissolves like rule. When you are looking at the two types, so when it comes to solubility with ionic compounds, there are a set of rules that we use solubility tables to determine if something is soluble. So when we're looking at these, the way that my chart here works is the top is always soluble, except when it's bound to certain ions. And the bottom on the black area down here is always insoluble all the time, except when it's bound to certain certain individual ions. So we're going to be practicing using solubility rules and actually going through the different types of solubility equations that you can see. Now, if something is insoluble, meaning it won't break down, what it's going to be forming is something known as a precipitate. A precipitate is an insoluble substance that separates from the solution, so meaning it stays as a solid. So we're going to be looking at some of these different examples and really how we can showcase them um, practicing using solubility rules. So let's try the very first one. So let's say I have KCl. Now KCl, when I add that to, a, to water, what exactly is going to happen? So what we're going to look at is look for the two individual ions. So the ions are going to be K and Cl. So what would that dissociate into It'd be K plus and Cl minus? Let's see if it's soluble. Do we have those two individual ions here? 
So if we look here, we can see that alkali metals, which is the very first one up here, are always soluble. And we can see K plus right here. So that's letting you know, yes, this is soluble. So what this reaction tells you is absolutely this is this one is going to be soluble. So the way that we can illustrate that is by putting a Q next to both of our ions here telling you, yes, this one is soluble. What if we try another? What if I have Na3PO4 PO4 here? And now with this one, how would this one break apart? Now the whole idea with this is it is all the ions are getting fully surrounded by water. So when this breaks down, we're going to be making sodium, which is one of our ions, and PO4, which is our other ion. So when we write this, we write Na plus plus PO4 three minus. And being that there is, if you notice here, like, oh, shouldn't I include the subscript? And you're right. But what that subscript tells you is that there's three sodiums bound around one phosphate. So in a sense, it's kind of like saying, all right, if I have PO4, three minus, I have all these sodiums that are completely surrounding um, that phosphate. So it's like having three of them bound around on all sides. Now, being that I have three of those individual ions, they all fully dissociate. So when that happens, one way for us to kind of to sort of look at that is, well, all right, if I have all of these little um these uh these water molecules surrounding this little these sodiums here, well, I can kind of draw that here and write, okay, I have a sodium in the middle. And that's going to be surrounded by sodiums on all parts. So we can illustrate that for ourselves. So when we have that, we have multiple sodiums being surrounded by water on all sides. Okay, and then we also have our other one. All right, so when this thing dissociates, it's the same thing as saying that we have the three sodiums surrounded by water on all sides. And then we also have the phosphate as well being surrounded. So when we want to make sure this is a balanced chemical equation, we want to show that we have three sodiums, one phosphate. Now let's check, is it even soluble to begin with? So. Sodium is also one of our alkali metals. So one thing you can always remember, what is always soluble, which is the abbreviation ANA, meaning alkali metals, ammonium, nitrate, acetates are always soluble no matter what. So in this case, we see that sodium is one of our alkali metals. This is always going to be soluble. You can also look at nitrates as well, or sorry, you can look at phosphates too, and being that we have a phosphate down here, phosphate is insoluble except when it's bound to an atom molecule. So in this case, it is going to be soluble. And you can look up either ion. They, they don't contradict each other. As long as you can find one of them on this chart, it will obey that rule. Okay, so being that that is soluble, we will write a Q next to each of these individual pieces here. Let's do another. So what if I gave you the following? What if I gave you acetic acid? So C2H3O2. And I had this liquid here. And I'm going to throw that into water. What is going to be happening? So we have to, once again, go through the two individual pieces here and try to separate the ions. So one of them is the acetate ion which is C2H3O2, that has a negative ion, and then H plus on both sides. So it's going to be H plus plus C2H3O2 minus 
are these soluble? So what we're either looking is either for the hydrogen ion or the acetate ion. So we can see that the acetate ion is one of our always soluble species here. So we can notice that right here, acetate is always soluble no matter what. So in this case, it's going to be soluble. So let's fill that in. So we're going to write that it's aqueous for both parts of the reaction. What if we do another one? Let's do two more just to kind of wrap it all up. So what if I gave you calcium carbonate? Would this be soluble in water? So the things that we're going to be looking at are going to be calcium and carbonate. Now, when we look at both of these, one thing we're looking for is either ion. And one thing you might find really quickly is Here's carbonate down here at the bottom. Notice how it's insoluble. So being that this is insoluble, and there's no exceptions to that at all, except when it is bound to Anna, that is the only time that that is ever insoluble, or sorry, soluble. So being that this is insoluble all the time, this is going to stay as a solid. So how do we write that? Well, being that this is Insoluble is going to stay as a solid, and we can just write insoluble next to it. And that would be our answer, is that it's insoluble. And as simple as that, you're looking to see what are the ions making up each of these parts. What about barium sulfate? What about this when we're adding barium sulfate to water? How could we illustrate that particular example? So once again, we're either going to look for barium, 2 plus, or sulfate, 2 minus. And if we look up barium sulfate, one thing you can see is, okay, sulfates are soluble, which we have here, except when they're bound to barium. So that is the exception here. So being that it's bound to barium, that tells you even though sulfates are always soluble, it's bound to barium, making it insoluble. So. With barium sulfate, this one is also insoluble. It won't break together or break apart. And an interesting fact about barium sulfate, this is actually one of the contrast agents that's commonly used in x-rays to actually try to boost x-rays. And that's one of the reasons why they want to use it is because it's insoluble. It'll help actually coat parts of the body so that way it contrasts your bones and makes them a little bit more visible. You don't want also want barium to be dissolving in the body because barium is extremely toxic as an ionic form. So being it's insoluble, it's safe to adjust in small amounts when it comes to medical imaging. So a lot of these things have different purposes when it comes to the health sciences specifically. So that's just one of these examples. So this is the basic idea of how to go through looking at solubility. Um, mainly what we're trying to do is see what ions does it dissolve into. Then we're going through the solubility rules to see how that break apart, breaks apart. And what this is going to feed into is looking at aqueous reactions or precipitation reactions to see, okay, if I have two of these solutions and I mix them together, will this actually make a solid or will they all dissolve and be no reaction? All right, and then this is my video on looking at solubility, and I hope that this helped a little bit, and I hope to see you all in the future later, all right? Bye now. Hope you all have a wonderful day.